Hello dolls and welcome back to another video. Today we're stepping back into the vibrant and wonderful world of the 1960s festivals. A phenomenon that defined a generation and left a lasting impact on the world of fashion. Let's dive in. From the Moncherry Pop Festival to Woodstock to all the wonderful fashion that was worn, this video is all about the 1960s festival scene. So to understand why music festivals were so popular in the 1960s, you have to take a look at the historic context. The 1960s were a time of immense cultural change, marked by the rise of the counterculture movement, civil rights activism, and an explosion of artistic expression. Music festivals became a crucial part of this cultural revolution. With events like the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967 and Woodstock in 1969 symbolizing the era's spirit of peace, love and rock and roll. The fashion at these festivals reflected the ethos of the time, characterized by a blend of bohemian, psychedelic and avant-garde influences. After all, it is currently festival season, I'm heading to a festival just this weekend, so I felt like it was very fitting and appropriate to take a look at the actual music festival history and the biggest music festivals of all time. And talk about the reasons and cultural impact that made the 1960s perfect for the music festival era. The first ever music festival was the Newport Jazz Festival, which was held for the first time in 1954. However, music festivals didn't reach their peak until the 1960s, when they became truly popular. One of the most popular and groundbreaking festivals was the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967, which was held in Monterey, California from June 16th to June 18th of 1967. It was organized by a team including John Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas, record producer Lou Adler and publicist Derek Taylor. The idea was to create a festival that celebrated rock, pop and soul in a way that would rival the established jazz and folk festivals. The Monterey Pop Festival was really popular. It was attended by some of the biggest musicians of the time, also in the crowd. People like Brian Jones showed up with his then girlfriend Nico of the Velvet Underground. The Mamas and the Papas were in the audience. So this festival truly had a wonderful lineup, not only on, but also off stage. Monterey Pop was the first major rock festival and it is often seen as the start of the summer of love. It introduced American audiences to musicians like Ravi Shankar or Jimi Hendrix and The Who, who hadn't made their big break in the US yet. The festival was a non-profit event with proceeds going to charity, setting a precedent for future festivals. But it is safe to say that the 1960s festival culture peaked in 1969 with the legendary Woodstock Festival. Woodstock was held from August 15th to August 18th of 1969 on a dairy farm in Bethel, New York. It was organized by John Roberts, Joel Rosenman, Artie Kornfeld and Michael Lang. Initially, the festival was planned to be a rather small, profitable event, but it quickly grew beyond the organization's expectations. Built as an Aquarian exposition, three days of peace and music, Woodstock became a symbol of the 1960s counterculture. It attracted an audience of over 400,000 people. This was unseen before. It featured legendary performances of artists such as Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, The Who and Santana. Despite all the logistical challenges and inclement weather, it is remembered as a peaceful gathering, emphasizing on music and unity. Even though these were the two most popular festivals of the decade, they by far weren't the only ones. So I just wanted to introduce you to some more popular 1960s music festivals. Starting with the Newport Folk Festival. While primarily known for its earlier years, the 1965 festival is particularly famous for Bob Dylan's controversial electric set, marking a significant moment in the fusion of folk and rock music. Held in the UK, the 1968 Isle of Wight Festival was one of the first major rock festivals in Europe and it featured acts like Jefferson Airplane and The Move which if you listen to my recent podcast episode, weren't actually called The Move, but actually just Move. If you want to learn more about bands that weren't actually called The, listen to our new podcast episode. It is all about Karen Carpenter of, and I was surprised to learn this too, not The Carpenters, but Carpenters. Everything is linked down below and I would love for you to check out our latest episode. The festival grew significantly in the following years, particularly in 1970 when Jimi Hendrix performed. The Texas International Pop Festival was held on Labor Day weekend in Louisville, Texas, shortly after Woodstock. 
It featured many of the same artists, including Janis Joplin, Led Zeppelin, and Santana. These festivals not only shaped the music scene of the late 1960s, but also played a crucial role in defining the cultural and social movement of the era. Each event had a unique impact, contributing to the rich tapestry of 1960s rock and counterculture history. Music festivals in the 1960s were more than just concerts. They were gatherings for like-minded individuals who shared a desire for change and a passion for music. The fashion at these festivals was an extension of this ethos, embodying the countercultural values of the time. Clothing became a canvas for personal and political statements, with festival goers using their attire to challenge societal norms and express their individuality. The fashion at 1960s music festivals was eclectic, bold and often handmade. So here are some of the key elements of 1960s festival fashion. Tie-dye clothing became synonymous with the countercultural movement. These vibrant, swirling patterns were visual representation of the psychedelic experiences associated with the era. Dresses, shirts, and even pants and tie-dye were essentials at festivals, reflecting the psychedelic influence of the time. Long flowing maxi dresses made from lightweight fabrics like cotton and mousseline were festival favorite. These dresses often featured intricate floral prints, embroidery or patchwork, creating a romantic and free-spirited look. These loose silhouettes provided comfort and freedom of movement, perfect for dancing and lounging in the grass. It is kind of what I am wearing today. This is an actual vintage dress from the 1960s has large, large bell sleeves, the most beautiful pattern. It's kind of a patchwork style with the fact that like down here and there, it's a different fabric. But I have to say, this is one of my all time favorite dresses. It is so beautiful. I'm gonna put up a picture here of me wearing it in full length so that you can see all its beauty. Bell bottom jeans and pants were a staple of festival fashion. Their wide flares created a dramatic silhouette that was both stylish and practical for the outdoor settings of festivals. Fringe details were also popular, adorning jackets, vests, and bags, adding a touch of bohemian flair. Peasant blouses with their loose fit and often off-the-shoulder designs were a festival staple. These tops, along with crocheted and lace tops, were perfect for the warm summer weather and added a touch of vintage charm to the look. Clothing often carried political messages, whether through slogans on t-shirts, military surplus items, and anti-war statements, or the adoption of ethnic styles in a form of cultural appreciation and solidarity. Accessories played a crucial role in festival fashion. Flower crowns, headbands, and bananas were popular headwear, often adorned with fresh or artificial flowers. Layered jewelry, including necklaces, bangles, and oversized rings, added to the eclectic and personalized style. Round sunglasses, popularized by musicians like John Lennon, were a must-have accessory. Comfortable yet stylish footwear was essential for navigating the often muddy festival grounds. Sandals, especially gladiator sandals, were popular. So were ankle boots and moccasins. Many festival goers also opted to be barefoot for a sense of freedom, embracing the natural connection with the earth. Many also liked cowboy boots because they were so durable and held up great on the muddy festival grounds. Several key figures and icons of the 1960s played a significant role in shaping festival fashion. Janis Joplin, with her bohemian style and love for feathers and beads, became an enduring symbol of the 1960s festival fashion. Her eclectic and colorful wardrobe was a perfect reflection of her vibrant personality and musical talent. Jimi Hendrix, another iconic figure, influenced man's festival fashion with his flamboyant style. His outfits often included paisley prints, velvet vests, colorful jackets and statement scarves, creating a look that was both bold and sophisticated. The fashion of 1960s music festivals has left an indelible mark on contemporary style. The bohemian and hippie influences of the era continue to inspire modern festival fashion with events like Coachella and Glastonbury drawing heavily from the aesthetics established in the 1960s. Today's festival goers still embrace the free-spirited and eclectic style that characterized the original Woodstock generation, but with a modern twist. And unfortunately, often also without the environmental consciousness of the original Woodstock generation, 
I often see this that people will go to a festival buy a bunch of clothes that is very festival appropriate but that doesn't really work with what they're usually wearing so they will buy this on fast fashion websites and um, yeah never really wear it again and this wasn't at all what the original hippies or festival goers of the 1960s were about so if you are attending a festival think about shopping secondhand think about making use of the pieces you already have some of you might wonder whether bohemian festival fashion and hippie fashion is all the same and while it definitely shares some common elements it is in fact not the same see festival fashion was event specific and practical for outdoor music gatherings this doesn't so much relate to the clothing pieces that you bring but more about the way that you would style pieces on the other side there was hippie fashion which was a broader lifestyle choice connected to the counterculture movement bohemian fashion was more about a timeless artistic style that drew on various cultural influences and was most unseen on artists and musicians of the time i have made videos both on the hippies of the 60s and the bohemian style i'm gonna link them here for you but i felt like this was important to understand why festival fashion is something different Festival fashion in general tends to be a lot more flamboyant and vibrant, hippie fashion more earthy and relaxed, and boho fashion more eclectic and polished. Flower crowns and floral patterns began to symbolize peace and love. Flowers were worn in the hair, pinned to the clothes, and even painted on faces as a representation of the peaceful protest against war and violence. The makeup was generally understated, focusing on a natural, almost no makeup look. Hair was often left long, unstyled, reflecting a carefree and natural aesthetic. Many also opted for painting their faces with colorful swirls and dreamy designs. This is what I decided to do for today. There is a tutorial coming in a short, but I highly recommend you to try it. It is so much fun. You can just let your creativity flow. The hair at Woodstock was longer and wilder than seen in the early and mid 1960s. Loose waves, braids and natural curls were the norm. Many festival goers also adorned their hair with feathers, beads and flowers, enhancing a bohemian vibe. While many still embraced the natural look, some attendees began to experiment with more expressive makeup including bold eyeliner and colorful eyeshadows influenced by the psychedelic art and music scene. The fashion at the Monterey Pop Festival was relatively simple and understated compared to the more extravagant and expressive styles seen at Woodstock. This shift mirrored the growing confidence and boldness of the countercultural movement. I think you can very obviously see this in the stage outfits of all the acts that performed both at Monterey Pop and at Woodstock. Something about the Woodstock aesthetic was just a lot louder, wilder, and truly encapsulated the 1960s festival look. By Woodstock, there was a stronger emphasis on individuality and personal expression. It became more prominent, with festival goers creating unique looks that reflected on their personalities and beliefs. While ethnic influences were present at the Monterey Pop, by Woodstock there was a deeper integration of global styles. The fashion at Woodstock showcased a rich tapestry of cultural influences, from Indian zaris to African prints, reflecting the era spirit of global unity and peace. Fashion at Woodstock also generally was more political charged. When you look at pictures from Woodstock, you will also see that a lot of people actually had signs that they brought with them to share their personal beliefs and political views. The psychedelic movement significantly influenced the bold colors, patterns and accessories at Woodstock. This artistic expression extended to fashion, with more vibrant and intricate designs becoming the norm. The evolution of festival fashion from Monterey Pop to Woodstock encapsulated the broader cultural shift of the late 1960s. What began as a simple bohemian style at Monterey blossomed into a full-fledged fashion phenomenon by Woodstock, characterized by boldness, individuality, and a rich blend of cultural influences. This journey reflects the growing confidence and creativity of a generation determined to change the world through music, art and fashion. So the next time you don your festival gear, remember the legacy of those pioneering days and embrace your inner free spirit. The fashion of the 1960s music festivals was more than just the trend. It was a movement that captured the essence of a transformative time. 
It celebrated freedom, individuality and a deep connection to music and nature. The styles that emerged from these festivals have become timeless symbols of rebellion and self-expression continuing to inspire and influence fashion until today. Amidst the haze of incense and the strum of guitars, the music festivals of the 1960s were timeless gatherings where the dreams and anthems of a generation came to life. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I actually decided to now make a Pinterest board for every episode because I saw that a lot of you asked about all the pictures and just wanting to know more. So I will have that linked down below. You can just go over to Pinterest and take your time looking at all these pictures over and over again. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would love you to give it a thumbs up and maybe even share it with a friend. It supports me, it supports the channel, and it would truly mean the world. Leave a comment down below telling me which 1960s style and culture you would like me to focus on next. I feel like we're also going to branch into the 70s really soon. Uh, I kind of want to introduce the 70s and then I can just like ping pong back and forth between the 60s and the 70s. But if there are any specific videos on 60s or 70s styles you would like to see me cover, please just comment down below. If you love what you saw, I would love for you to consider subscribing. I pour my heart and soul into these videos, so it would mean the world to have you around. I hope you have a beautiful day. Go out, enjoy the sunshine. Take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, everybody.